I talk about books that have stood the test of time. They were written a long time ago, and nowadays people living in the 21st century can use these books for a piece of advice, a piece of you know, stimulation for reflection about life, the meaning of life, what is good, what is bad, how to behave, how to not to behave, and so on. Definitely, the Meditations by Marcus Aurelius is uh, one of such books. It's very interesting for me because, um, first of all, it was written 2000 years ago. And when you read this book, you have the feeling that, well, not so many things have changed. I mean, obviously, obviously, technology, uh, 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 progress in medicine, economy, social structure, uh, civilization, you know, all this stuff, all has changed from this perspective. However, the, the law, the human lot, human sense of suffering, human sense of what's the meaning of life, or the questions about uh, what should I do in my life? What's the sense of, you know, living uh, till the end, you know? Uh, what's my relationship with, you know, people around? how to be happy with the people around, how to be happy with myself, you know, all the, it's the same. I will not talk about the figure. Uh, I will talk about the um, important things or substance of the book. Although the figure itself is very interesting because the author of the book was top politician, we would say now. He was the, uh, he was Roman emperor 2000 years ago. But please do not be confused that I'm talking about top politicians and the perspective of the people of power, because interestingly, uh, some almost the same thing was uh, 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 um, as if taught and discussed by the other famous Stoic philosopher, because Marcus Aurelius was politician, but also Stoic philosopher, but Epictetus was a guy who lived at, very, at the very same time as Marcus Aurelius and was, we may say, down the social hierarchy because he was ex-slave for a big part of his life. He was slave, Epictetus, and additionally, he was physically disabled. So a guy who was physically disabled and was ex-slave was saying very similar things at the guy who was at the, the top of the power structure of the then society. So it's for me kind of interesting how people coming from such different backgrounds can say the same things. And at the same time, these things have, as if stood the test of time, because if you go to a library or bookshop in your countries, you will see most probably many books about Stoicism nowadays as a sort of, I don't know, kind of instruction or guide how to live well, how to use the wisdom of the ancient Stoics in our contemporary perspective. So for me personally, it has always been a kind of mystery. At, at the same time, a sort of, uh, I would say, inspiration for my activity. How is it possible that people who were uh, at different social strata are telling us very similar things? In my view, the most important thing is uh, kind of rationalization or trying to think or trying to recognize the basic difference for, for the Stoics. That is, what depends on me and what does not depend on me. Um, and what is not dependent on me, I should not, they say, I should not be much preoccupied with because I have no impact, I have limited influence upon things. To have a good healthy mind or good attitude in life. We should think about this division and focus upon what we can control and not to be preoccupied too much about things that we do not control. 
And I will give you a couple of examples, starting with a very trivial one, that is weather. Um, you know, I know many people who have very bad mood because it's raining or it's snowing or it's hot or something like that, as if the, they are dependent as far as their mood or, I don't know, good attitude is concerned, they are dependent upon external things, external things meaning they have no impact or influence or no control whatsoever. Because it is not your control. You can do nothing if there is, you know, it's raining or it's snowing or something like that. However, the Stoics would say, you have a whole lot of control as to how to behave when it's raining or how to behave when it's snowing or what to do to protect yourself against rain, snow, things like that. So you have an umbrella, you have a coat, things like such trivial things. So you cannot control the rain, but you can control your what you should do when it's raining, something like this. But as I say, it's a trivial example. So I will now uh, I, I move to more serious examples. Body. Um, let's let's talk about body, our bodies. Well, there are many possible approaches towards the problem. The stoic approach is like this. You cannot control your body completely. For example, you cannot control aging process. You cannot control you know, possible illnesses that may appear. But you can control healthy food, for example. You can control what you eat. You can control your diet. And it may happen that this control will give you wonderful results. Although you will never be sure 100% if you have wonderful results, okay, but it is beyond your control. It is beyond our control. Nobody can control fully what happens with our bodies, but we can do something to, as if, reduce or limit the risk. So if we control what we eat, what we drink, you know, all this stuff, the probability that our bodies will be fine is higher than when we neglect that. Okay, something like that, something like this. COVID or the pandemic, let's talk about this because it's a very important issue. We cannot control the virus, right? We don't know if we go out, we, 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 you know, get into trouble when you get back home and maybe terrible thing happens. However, within our power, within our control is reducing the risk. So if we know what is risky, as far as the uh, COVID pandemic is concerned, we may reduce this risk and it is within our control to put it in stoic way right so maybe the result will be you know nothing but maybe not we do not know but we know the stoics would say we do know that we can have some kind of impact influence upon our motivation to try at least to reduce the risk Okay, so it's the second example. The, uh, the, next, uh, the next example is reputation. Um, reputation, especially in the you know, mass media and uh, social media, is something that we can talk about. That also, in the context of Stoicism, and obviously Stoicism 2,000 years ago, you know, the Stoics had no idea what you know, social media or such phenomena are, however, I think they can teach us a lot about that. So, reputation. Um, the Stoics most probably would say you have hardly any control about 
uh, the re your reputation or our reputation in in the public sphere right because different people can watch what we are saying can hear what hear what we, we are saying they comment can criticize you can you can face hate speech all this stuff it is beyond your control however you can fully control what you want to say you can fully control if you are well prepared to say what you want to say so the result may be well who knows however your what you are saying and the way of you preparing the material of what to say depends completely upon you if you want to say that if this is what you really think and this is something that you have checked you are telling you know as far as your knowledge is concerned you are not lying you are not doing crazy things but you have prepared the material very well and you are able to defend this material defend the substance defend the message you are trying to say it depends upon you right so you have control on this a similar example a little bit similar example is job interview you want to get a job so you're gonna have a job interview okay you cannot control the whole process you will never know if you're gonna be accepted or not maybe you're gonna be rejected right does not depend upon you because much depends upon the, per the person you know on the other side that is trying to, to, to hire you and so on. However, it is completely within your control, completely within your, I would say, intentions to prepare yourself, to offer your strong sides, to tell, to express, to manifest, to show what you want, what you need, what you can offer, and you can prepare it in a very good way. So there are people within this scope of their powers that would say, I don't care, you know, and they do not prepare well. However, we, the other people can prepare very, very well. The result is not guaranteed. However, your good preparation, your you know this 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 showing everything that you have as a as strong sides it depends upon you okay so it's another example still another example death the stoics were talking about death you know very um i would say extensively and what did they suggest that perhaps nowadays is also you know important topic as as, as everywhere you know, because everybody will die someday. Sorry to say that, but everybody will de die someday. So perhaps a modicum of reflection is needed here. What is death? And should we be afraid of, of dying or something like that? So the Stoics would say, <coughs> excuse me, you do not, we do not have control about that because sooner or later we will die however we have control about the quality of our living till that time so you may say that if if living is going up till um, you know this 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 i would say finale this final moment the final moment is beyond con beyond control but this quality of this going it is within our control so here we can do a lot okay so these are my examples so as you can see um the way of talking or the way of writing is something that is not how to say that i'm referring to something that happens uh, in, in social media nowadays and in other places, something I would call group victimization narrative. That there is a kind of way of talking or writing that nowadays that divides the group of people into us and them 
And at the same time, as if saying, suggesting that we are victims and they are guilty. And something like our culture, our culture is a victim culture and they are guilty. Or my group of people or the group to which I belong to is the, vic <clears throat> the victim group, they are guilty. Or, you know, according to different um, divisions, you know, here we do not have that at all because this stoic attitude is, uh, tries to recognize our agency, that I'm the agent, meaning I'm the person who can have uh, an attitude towards different things like suffering, success, you know, failure and so on. And this rhetoric or this narrative tries to show that, of course, there are many things around that are terrible and so on, but very often I am responsible for interpreting this what happens around, including suffering. In other words, it is in, within my powers to interpret something that happens, even if this what happens is something bad, not nice, and so on. And I, I have a quote here. Um, and and, and uh, please listen to this. Endless suffering, all from not allowing the mind to do its job. Once again, endless suffering all from not allowing the mind to do its job. What does it mean? It seems to me that suffering here is something that should be as if interpreted. And they are suggest the Stoics are suggest suggesting that and I'm not talking about, you know, crime, murder, or things like that, but most things that we nowadays describe as suffering, you know, tragedy or something, from some perspective and from some, uh, I would say, interpretation, it's not suffering at all. In other words, they would say, the Soviets would say, that suffering is one thing, but your interpretation is the other thing. So you may convert the suffering into something that is not suffering at all, especially from when you take a look from, from a distance, from a, another perspective. For example, once again, I don't know, some, some uh, for example, you have a problem of, of failure, right? And you are suffering from a failure. However, and, you, uh, 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 and we think it's the end of the world. However, after some time, the failure may be a very good lesson, thanks to which we may not commit a mistake next time. Maybe failure is a sort of, I would say, result from our mistakes. And failure may be interpreted not as a, as a, as a tragedy, as a suffering, something like that, but perhaps as a, as a lesson we have to learn and use in our future activities. So what the Stoics would su suggest that um, it is your mind, reason, or whatever you call it, something that is inside of our brains that should be cultivated, but not cultivated just to be cultivated, but because this is a very important tool that is instrumental in our interpretation of our agency and how to get more material sources, inspiration, to have this tool more developed. Well, typically for the Stoics philosophy or uh, nowadays, we, maybe we would call it the humanities or profound reflection. This type of um, uh, great books, for example, that have stood the test of time. These can be the sources thanks to which we can think more about how to interpret things that that we bump into, that we face, that we confront. 
So for the Stoics, philosophy and similar things like the humanities, literature, great books, it's, it can be a sort of therapy. therapy. Therapy is a medical term, like you have, you know, suffer from some kind of illness and so on, you have therapy. They thought that philosophy and similar areas can be a therapy for soul, for your soul, for our souls, for our minds, for our reasons, uh, for, for our imagination that would help us see what happens around in a more, I would say, distant way. We don't have to react immediately that something happens. We can, we can uh, take a deeper look at that and more profound interpretation of that and see it as if from a distance and saying, hmm, maybe it's a, it's a nice lesson for me to learn and not to commit the thing next time.